In this video, I'm going to cover the different types of necrosis, where each is commonly seen, and why they have different patterns of pathology. So just a quick review, what is necrosis? This is an accidental, uh, unregulated, or pathological type of cell death due to some kind of irreversible injury or lethal change that has occurred to the cell that it cannot adapt to. Some examples of this are things like ischemia, trauma, toxins or radiation. When the cell starts to undergo necrosis, the membrane integrity decreases, contents leak out, uh, like lysosomal contents, they start digesting the cell. The cell membrane integrity containing the cell goes down and inflammation is, uh, is caused from the leakage of these contents. The digestion of these contents and the inflammatory response that occurs around the cell can take several hours to develop, so there's no immediate observable changes. For example, in a myocardial infarction leading to death, there's actually no changes right away, and it'll take about 4 to 12 hours for these changes to become apparent visibly. Now, there are also nuclear changes that occur due to the breakdown of DNA. The first of these changes is known as pycnosis. Now this is also seen in apoptosis, but this is nuclear shrinkage and increased basophilia. And this increased basophilia is just a blue-like appearance of the nucleus as that condensation occurs. Now the second change is karyolysis, and this is when chromatin starts to fade away due to a loss of DNA due to digestion of the actual chromatin. As this nucleus dissolves, it just becomes fainter and fainter, and the stain that actually stains from the nucleus is just picking up less and less material. And then lastly, karyorexis. This is when the nucleus actually fragments out into the cytoplasm and then dissolves after that. Now, these changes are all specific to individual cells, but when multiple cells die, the tissue or organ itself is said to be necrotic. And under different conditions, the gross morphology associated with necrosis can assume specific and different patterns. Now, the first of these types of necrosis is known as coagulative necrosis. And when this occurs, the architecture of the dead tissue is actually preserved for a few days and is quite firm to the touch. So in this type of injury, there is a denaturation of structural proteins as well as enzymes within cells. And this denaturation is what blocks the proteolysis of these dead cells. There's no more enzymes or at least no more functional enzymes within the cells themselves to break down the tissue within the cells and the surrounding tissue. So this is what is gonna help these cells to hang around, to preserve the architecture. There's nothing to actually break down the surrounding tissue. Ultimately, these are cleaned up via phagocytosis, and that is just when leukocytes are gonna come in and start eating up all of the debris from these dead cells. And this is often caused by some kind of vessel obstruction leading to ischemia. And this happens throughout the body pretty much everywhere except for the brain. Now secondly, we have liquefactive necrosis, and as we just mentioned, in contrast to the previous coagulative necrosis, in this type of injury, dead cells are actually digested and the tissue becomes this kind of liquid, viscous mass. This is typically seen in bacterial or fungal infections. The microbes themselves may have enzymes which start to break down the tissue. They also attract white blood cells and these are going to release enzymes to try and kill those bacteria and fungus. Those are going to damage the surrounding tissue. The necrotic material itself has this sort of creamy yellow appearance and these are mostly dead leukocytes and this is referred to as pus. Now this type of injury is very indicative of hypoxic death in the central nervous system or in the brain and will have again this soft creamy yellow appearance. Next is gangrene or gangrenous necrosis. Now, this is not a specific pattern or type of cell death similar to the last two, but this is instead a combination of those two types of cell death. And in cases like these, we often see some type of uh, some type of injury to the lower limb, like the legs, and they have lost their blood supply and start to undergo necrosis. And this is the coagulative necrosis. But then on top of that, there is a bacterial infection superimposed on that area, and that drives liquefactive necrosis due to those enzymes within the bacteria and maybe white blood cells being attracted or drawn into that area. Now, this combination of the liquefactive necrosis on top of the coagulative necrosis, that combination is referred to as gangrene. Now, next is fat necrosis. This refers to a focal area of fat destruction, most commonly exemplified by the pancreas. When there's some sort of pancreatic destruction, the enzymes within the pancreas, specifically lipases, will start to leak out in the surrounding tissue, and those lipases are actually enzymes designed to break down fat. 
once the surrounding fat is exposed to these enzymes, those fat cell membranes become liquefied and their contents of the triglycerides within get split and the contents of the fatty acids combine with calcium and actually form these chalky white deposits, which is also referred to as fat saponification. All right, the next type of necrosis, known as caseous necrosis, this is most often seen in tuberculosis. And like you see in this picture, it has a sort of yellowy white, cheesy, friable appearance and texture. And that's where it gets its cheese like association or caseous from the name. The necrotic area is a collection of fragmented lysed cells and debris which are contained within an inflammatory border. And this fo focus of inflammation is known as a granuloma. And then lastly, fibrinoid necrosis. This is usually seen in immune reactions and involves blood vessels predominantly. Now this is when complexes of antigens and antibodies combine and actually deposit within the arterial walls themselves. Deposits of these complexes along with fibrin leaking out of the vessels creates this unique sort of bright pink appearance on histology which is referred to as the fibrinoid necrosis. Now, ultimately, regardless of the type of necrosis, necrotic cells and their contents will be taken up by phagocytosis and broken down by surrounding leukocytes that are still alive and healthy. And if not destroyed, these leftover cells are often a location for the deposition of calcium salts and other, and other minerals, and they become calcified, and this is known as dystrophic calcification.